a woman has gone viral for describing to TikTok how she got a date with a man. Take it away. I saw this really cute guy at the grocery store the other day. So naturally, I followed him to the checkout counter. And when he gave the cashier his credit card, I peeped it to see what his name was. And then I Googled him and found his social media profiles. And I was able to tell that he was single. So I went through his friends list and I found his mother's page. And then I looked through his mother's page and I saw that she was a member of this book club that's in my area. So I sent a request to join the book club. So I went to the book club meeting and I met his mom there and we bonded over some books that we both liked. And she just thought I was so nice. And I brought it up randomly in conversation that I was single. And she let me know that she had a son that was single also that lived in the area. And maybe it would be cool for us to get together and chat sometime. So I gave her my number, which she gave to her son. And this morning he texted me and asked if I'd like to get together this weekend and do something. So I guess we're gonna go on a date. <laughs> I'm really excited. <laughs> I, I love this bit. Something that I think most people on the internet missed is this is obviously just a bit. This is obviously a joke. I, this isn't real. I, I don't have proof of that, but I'd be willing to bet a lot of money that it's just a bit. In part because, one, it's very difficult to see someone's name on a credit card. You know, like if you're online at a grocery store, my eyes aren't that good, but I, I don't think you could do it really. And then too, if you've got the date with the guy in a few hours and you're really this crazy, you wouldn't, you wouldn't post a TikTok about it before the date, would you? You would, maybe you'd tell your friends or something, but you, you probably wouldn't do that. So it's, it's very funny though. And it's gone viral. And the reason that it's of public interest, I think, is because of the reaction to it. Because there's one really stupid reaction that I've seen for the people who are taking this seriously, who think this woman actually did this, which is, can you imagine if a man did this? If a man behaved this way, it would be, this woman would take out a restraining order. But if a woman behaves this way, we all kind of laugh it off and say it's cute, albeit perhaps a little crazy. To which I say, right, that's true. That's right. It's different <laughs> when men do stuff it's different than when women do the same stuff because men and women, you see, are different. That's why. That's why. And so it's a delightful thing. There's a phrase. Please pardon my French pronunciation. Vive la différence. Which is, you know, it's great. Isn't that wonderful? Long live the distinction between men and women. Isn't that, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Isn't that so funny? So this, you know, if this were real, this woman's probably about 15% too crazy. But a lot of guys, if a, if a cute girl walks up to a guy and says, hey, I think you're really cute, you know, or she even kind of looks you up, whatever, finds you on Instagram or Facebook and messages, hey, you're cute, you want to get a drink? M most guys would say, like, heck yeah, man, let's go. That sounds great. Whereas if it were in the reverse and some dude did this to a chick, the woman would have her guard up and say the guy seems kind of creepy because that would be the case because men are stronger than women. And men and women have different uh, reactions to and inclinations toward the opposite sex. And yeah, that's true, man. And... and some people on the right, I mean, this is just a silly little video that's going around, but some people on the right, they, they take this stuff very, very seriously. I think this is one of the big problems with the, I guess you'd call it red pill movement or the men going their own way or the the, the guys who really, they, they really seem to not like women and they don't want to get married and they just, they're furious at women, you know. Uh, they seem to, have the same kind of anthropology that the libs do, you know, in the sense that they hate the difference between men and women. I guess it's the difference between like a normal person, a normal guy should look at a woman. A, a liberal guy would look at a woman and say, there's no difference between a woman and a man. There's no difference whatsoever. We're all exactly the same. Men should go into the women's room. A normal guy should look at the different, at men and women and say, ah, women, women, those women, very difficult to understand those women. Ah, isn't that wonderful? And then the guys who have been really just radicalized, I don't know, they say, oh, the women, they're different. I hate that the women are different. No, I really like, if the women were not different and I were attracted to women, that would mean that I'm gay. And that's kind of, it would be kind of weird, wouldn't it? But that's what those guys sound like. They sound, ironically, just like the guys on the left.
maybe that is that, do they call that horseshoe theory? I think so. There is a, I don't know if it's a student or just some kind of crazy protester, but uh, sauntered in to Cambridge over across the pond in the motherland and destroyed a painting of Lord Arthur Balfour at Cambridge. Uh, This person did so in the name of Palestine Action. And this person shows up, starts spray painting. You can see in this video that went viral, spray painting all over this beautiful old oil portrait of, of Lord Balfour then pulls out a knife or a box cutter and slices up the the painting. So just totally destroys this painting. I don't really care what one's position is on the Israel-Palestine conflict. It's a longstanding, very complicated conflict. That sort of barbarian should not only not be allowed into Cambridge, That sort of barbarian should not be allowed into the United Kingdom or into the civilized world. That is the end of culture, okay? Certainly that person should never be allowed near any work of art. That person should not be permitted in civilized society. Obviously, I don't know, I haven't seen any follow-up reports of, of what would happen to that person. I hope the person would be locked up for many, many years, decades, one hopes. Uh, but, Furthermore, you see this not only with the Israel-Palestine conflict, you see this with the climate wackos who go in and they throw soup on priceless art. And fortunately, uh, the civilized people have have realized the threat from the barbarians at the gates. And so they put the, the priceless art behind glass. So generally the art is preserved. But this is, this is the end of culture, truly. Because there's no limit to uh, supposedly righteous causes. Again, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that Palestine liberation or, you know, protecting us all from the evil sun monster who's going to kill us. I'm not suggesting those are necessarily the most righteous causes in the world. But, but even if they were, there's no limit to this. And so if, if one can, can uh, convince oneself to do almost anything, any barbaric act of, of cultural destruction in the name of some cause. And at, at the end of that, the common good is just destroyed the, 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 public life, you know, the culture, the art, everything that we all kind of do together that beautifies our world, it's all gone. All totally gone. And in part, I don't want to blame the victim here, but uh, Cambridge and Oxford and Harvard and Yale and all the universities bear a little of of the blame here, at least the, the education system broadly. People used to be raised in a, in a more right manner, they, would, they learned that there's a difference between good and bad. There are, just, there are just ways to behave. There are things that one does and one does not do. And that, that's gone out the window now as we make a mockery of the moral order, as we make a mockery of things like uh, respect for our elders, not just our immediate parents, but our forebears, respect for our country, fili- which is an extension of filial piety, a, a respect for hierarchy and order, uh, humility. All of these traditional virtues have been denied in modern life. And so we become animals and, and barbarians like this, this pro-Palestine protest or whatever. Uh, that, 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 that is just an acid that will will eventually just wash away all of culture if it hasn't done so already. It's not just, you can't just blame the Brits. You can't just even blame the pro-Palestine people. We tear down statues all the time in our own country as well. We tear down art and and history all the time in our own country as well. Now it's finally visiting the educational institutions again, which lie at the heart of much of the problem. That was a great clip, huh? It was good. It was good. You can say it. It's fine. No one's... No one's around. You could, well, if you agree, you should ring the bell and subscribe to the Michael Knowles YouTube channel. And we'll see you next time.